All right, and good afternoon, everyone. This is Ryan Miller with North Carolina Building Performance Association welcoming you to today's webinar. Uh, thank you very much for participating. Uh, it is Thursday, October 24th, 2020. Um, we've got a lot of folks listening in live, but we will have other folks listening in later on. So uh, welcome to everybody that's participating. Uh, today's webinar will be on building envelope and roof restoration products and best practices. Um, it will be presented by three folks from Henry Company who we will hear from in just a little bit. Um, Henry is a member company of NCBPA. We are the statewide trade association, not-for-profit for building performance professionals and companies, whether you're in energy efficiency, green building, high performance construction, or just somebody else interested in the industry. Welcome to the webinar and hopefully uh, you find some good information here with us today. Um, we are a member-based association and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, so this is an opportunity that uh, Henry is working with us on as part of their membership with us is to do a little bit of education and promotion for their company and we hope that you all enjoy it. So members have access to all of our webinars for free and anytime they want to we do record these. So just another added benefit of the work that we do here at NCBPA. So I'm going to offer a little bit of an introduction uh, just to get us started. Um, as a reminder for folks that um, are unfamiliar with our webinars, we will be keeping folks on mute uh, for the duration of today's webinar. That's just to reduce background noise and people driving and building stuff, barking dogs sometimes as well. So we will try to ignore those things today, but if you do have a question or a comment, please put that into the chat box and we'll be happy to address that either during the webinar or as we get towards the end. Uh, we can open up the phone line at the end if anybody has a question or would like to have some discussion with our presenters. And so um, just know that that will be available to us here at the end. Also, folks uh, on here live will receive a recording of today's webinar, also a link to the presentation. Uh, so you'll get that on your email soon afterwards. So if you miss a slide or are looking to take notes, um, just know that you'll get a full copy of everything that you see here today um, after uh, we're done. So first off, just a quick introduction uh, to Henry Company. We're gonna have uh, the presenters talk a little bit more about this, but um, Henry is a member of NCBPA. They offer an awful lot of products on the commercial and residential, both single family, multifamily side. So you'll be hearing about a lot of those today, but they've been a member company of ours for just about a year now and a national and international company working all over the place. And you'll be hearing from our North Carolina rep as well as uh, some other folks. So uh, just a little bit more information about NCBPA. Um, we are the trade association, as I said, for building performance companies and professionals. Uh, the folks that we work with are simply interested in making North Carolina homes and buildings work better. That's the short way to say it. Um, up at the top left, you should see a, a, an icon for homeenergync.org. That is our residential consumer education website. You can go there or send your customers or family members or friends there to find information about how they can save energy at home. It's all free. And then buildingperformancenc.org, that is our similar website, but for non-residential. So no matter what building type you have, if it is a retail, if it's a restaurant, if it's a hospital, if it's anything else, office building, we've got information there to help you learn how to save energy and improve performance as well. So take a look when you get a chance. Um, over the last couple of years, we've been releasing some reports. It's definitely not the only thing we do, but just to mention that um, a couple of years ago, 2016, we started talking about the business case for energy efficiency, how investing in less, i.e. energy, creates more, i.e. savings and benefits for North Carolina. We then also inventoried our market and came up with kind of a big picture perspective of what we could do if we all work together. And then that ended up being our energy efficiency potential report, which found that our state can save about 16.8% of its energy usage by focusing on building performance activities. So all that information is available on our website. Just wanted to mention that we do an awful lot of other stuff that is um, up on the screen now in part. Um, in addition to those reports and the potential study that I mentioned, workforce development is incredibly important to us. So educating students, faculty, and industry professionals about what our industry is and what opportunities we have and then also uh, advocacy, policy, lobbying, things like that. Um, we lead that work for the state as well. So if you're interested in any of this work, I hope that you'd consider becoming a member if you're not already. 
and reach out to us if you have any questions about what else we can do for you. Uh, there is some more information on our website about our board of directors. Uh, applications are actually open for that now. So if you're interested in joining the board at NCBPA, um, listed on the screen are just a couple of articles from our board members over the last couple, uh, couple of months, maybe last year, on some of the different topics that we talk about. Um, board members are a volunteer for us, so it's an unpaid position, but they help guide our work. And if you'd like to be one of my 10 or 12 bosses, then I'd encourage you to apply. You can find information at buildingnc.org on our news page. And then lastly, just a little bit of information about the membership opportunity with us. So membership is open to all industry companies and professionals. Do start at $25 per month per company. We offer the biweekly member newsletter, policy alerts, insider news, market intelligence, much more. We also offer discounts to things like our 2020 conference that will be held next August. More information on that at the very end. And then you can certainly participate in committees, member meetings, or the board if you're interested. So membership applications on our website just takes five minutes uh, if you're interested. And if you're already a member, thank you very much for being a member. And I hope that you will stick with us when your next renewal term comes up. So without further ado, um, I'm going to be kicking it over to our three presenters today and ask them each to introduce themselves a little bit, talk about what they do at Henry, and then we've got a whole bunch of information to go through with you all today. So just as a reminder, um, it's going to be kind of fast and furious today as far as the slides go, but you will get a copy of everything um, that you'll see today and some additional slides as well. And then, of course, the contact information is on here, so you can reach out to these gentlemen um, if you need more assistance. So um, first off, we'll be hearing from Connor with Henry. He is going to cover uh, sort of the part that he's responsible for, and we'll be discussing that a little bit more. And then we'll hear from the other two gentlemen later. So uh, Connor, it looks like you are unmuted, and I'm going to uh, be advancing the slides for you, I believe. So just let me know when you want me to push that button. And if anybody has Perfect. any questions for Connor as we go along, feel free to put that in the chat box and I'll be monitoring that and I'll just uh, chime in and try to politely interrupt Connor if I need to. So uh, Connor, uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Ryan. Um, and as Ryan was saying, if you guys have any questions uh, today, tomorrow, next month, you know, feel free to reach out. Uh, my line is always open. Um, uh, so my job at Henry, I'm the director of national accounts for our HRS division, which is uh, roof restoration division. Um, I handle a lot of the big name accounts, big name roofers, uh, big accounts like Walt Disney, uh, Marriott, etc. Uh, and what I'm going over today is basically a, a really brief synopsis of uh, why we do roof coatings, why it's a big uh, push for us. And um, um, uh, Ryan, next slide. Uh, what, you, what you guys will find uh, throughout this presentation is a common theme that we're one company with um, pretty much everything you could possibly need when it comes to waterproofing and air sealing. Uh, and something that you'll see uh, on the vertical wall is that there's a change coming about where a lot of people were using loose laid house wraps and it's moving over to a more uh, either a peel and stick or a fluid applied. Uh, and the theme there is monolithic and seamless. So that's where we see roof restoration, uh, specifically coatings being such a great uh, product for or option for the roofing market. Uh, next slide. So what I'm gonna be focused on really is our coatings. And we do have all different types of coatings, uh, silicone, uh, acrylic, aluminum, asphalt, uh, and I'm going to explain the key benefits to each, but again, I've got to keep it quick. So, um, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but I like to always start off with why, what's in it for me. So uh, if you're a building owner, what you'll see is it actually is the lowest upfront cost compared to all the traditional uh, roofing options. And we're talking here about commercial roofs, so flat roofs in general and metal, pitched metal as well. Um, but you can see price differences from 30 to 50%, you know, altogether cost. So it's a huge difference when it comes to pricing, right? Um, you're gonna get your energy savings. It's a lower maintenance product too. So, you know, if you had a, you know, a, uh, you know, 
a tear in, in the coating, you simply go up and put another little layer of uh, the coating on. You just pull up your bucket and wipe it right on, and that's it. There's no patching, welding, etc. It's, it's the easiest way to do it. And it can be recoded over and over and over again. Uh, and I'll explain that uh, more as we go along. Uh, next slide. So what you'll see on the next slide here is the extended roof life cycle. So it is code that you cannot have more than uh, two layers of roofing on, meaning if you have an asphalt roof uh, and then you put a layer of TPO on, if the time comes where you, you are past your warranty, you're getting a lot of leaks and you need to um, you know, think about what your options are. If you wanted to go with another single ply, such as TPO or EPDM, you would actually have to completely tear off your roof uh, and redo it all over again, which then means you also have to comply to the most uh, updated building codes. So parapet walls, curbs, et cetera. And that could be quite costly. Uh, what's nice about coatings are it's considered a maintenance item. So you can, uh, on your second layer, you could actually just put a layer of coating down and it won't uh, count as a third layer. It's a maintenance item, so it's very simple. It's <laughs> extremely cost effective. And a nice stat I like to throw here too um, is it is um, over 20% over of our landfills right now are actually filled with roofing products. So we can be environmentally friendly for, um, while at the same time helping out our own pockets and the life cycle of the roof. Next slide. Um, and the next slide, what you'll see is minimal facility disruption. When you do a coating job, you actually won't even know half the time that people are working on the roof. Uh, if you were to tear off the roof, there's dumpsters all over the place, debris flying everywhere. Uh, you have the possibility of it a freak rainstorm, and then you're in big trouble because that Waters has nothing to stop it from coming down inside the building. Uh, with coatings, you simply take your buckets up to the roof, get your roller or sprayer, and go from there. It's that easy. Um, next slide. What you also see is the energy savings. So if you have a black color roof, um, first off, there's a lot of tax incentives right now to go to a white color roof or cool roof uh, rebates, but you can bring down the temperature drastically. Uh, what you'll see here is one example uh, where the roof, a black coated roof, a uh, black granulated roof is 171 degrees, and then that white roof is 103 degrees. This is all in the same city. So that would greatly reduce your HVAC use, which obviously energy savings is great for us. We save money, right? Uh, next slide. And uh, what you'll see on the next slide is, uh, as I was alluding to, there's a lot of t uh, tax benefits as well. So um, a lot of states are actually giving you rebates uh, for, uh, for um, turning your roof into a cool roof, a white roof, if you will. Um, but there's great tax benefits to it as well. Because coatings are considered a maintenance item, it is not going to be a, a capital expense. So if you were to do a traditional roof with, you know, single ply, TPO, EPDM, you actually have to list that as a capital expense. Where coatings, it's, a, it's actually a tax write-off. You can deduct it in, in year one, uh, which obviously is a very big incentive for the building owner. Next slide. And what you'll see on this slide here is if you guys have ever been in a, a big city, you'll notice big cities generally are five to 10 degrees hotter um, than the outside, you know, uh, urban and uh, rural environments. And the reason for that is called the heat island effect. Uh, basically everything, you know, the black roofs, concrete, pavement, uh, all these HVAC systems running, um, all the pollutants in the air actually traps all that heat in the, in the cities. And it, greatly uh, rises the temperature. That's where you see this difference of five, 10 degrees. Well, with cool roofs, not only are you not attracting the heat, uh, but at the same time, your HVAC systems are not working as hard and you're uh, 
helping uh, reduce pollutants. Next slide. And what you'll see here, this is, back in the day, a lot of people referred to coatings as painting. Uh, this is not painting, um, especially when it comes to our silicone products. Silicone is true waterproofing. So when you put silicone down, it's a membrane, and what you're getting is true waterproofing. Silicone is a waterproof product. Now, that's not to be confused with acrylics. Acrylics are not ponding waterproof, meaning that if you have, like in this example, where there's ponding water, it will not resist that. It will break down and it will leak. Uh, aluminum's the same way. But uh, uh, silicone, on the other hand, is waterproof. So when you put silicone down, you're getting waterproofing. Next slide. So now I'm gonna begin uh, talking about the roof restoration process. It's very simple. Uh, next slide. Um, so when is a roof a, a good candidate? It's very simple. Is it clean? Now, when I say clean, can you just take a power uh, wash to it and get off a lot of the debris, uh, mold, dirt, et cetera? Um, is it dry? Now, on roofs um, that are what we consider too wet would be over 25% moisture. 25% um, or more of the roof has uh, high moisture content. If that's the case, we're gonna tell you it's probably not your best option, okay? Uh, in the case where 25% of the roof is not um, saturated, what we'll tell you to do is replace that section uh, with like materials and then coat right over everything. That will be cost effective to you, uh, the building owner and the contractor. Um, anything more than 25% will end up losing its cost effectiveness. And sound, obviously the roof needs to be structurally sound. Next slide. So depending on your substrate, we have all different types of products for you. As I said, silicone, acrylic, uh, aluminum, uh, asphalt, we have something for you. Uh, what you'll see though is, and what you'll keep hearing me preach is silicone is pretty much good on every substrate. Uh, and that's the one we like leading with because this is the true solution. This is true waterproofing, but um, obviously it comes at a little bit higher price than the other options. Next slide. So when you figured out what pro um, what substrate you have, the obviously next part of the issue is figure out what product I'm going to use. So next slide. Um, so going through the products. We'll start with the Cadillac, which is our 988 silicone system. So um, we do sell silicone uh, products at Home Depot, but those will not come with the warranties that our pro-grade 988 um, products have. These have more robust warranties. Next slide. So what, a couple facts about silicone in general. So um, silicone is, it has remains a high flexibility of a wide temperature range. You're actually seeing silicone uh, products all over the place. Um, people's oven mitts are now being made out of silicone. Ice makers, uh, ice cube trays now have uh, come in silicone. Um, and, and that's very important because obviously we deal with some freeze thaw issues where one day it'll be snowing and the next it'll be 80 degrees out. That creates a lot of pressure on the laps of single ply products uh, like PPO, EPDM. Well, with silicone, you don't have to worry about that. Um, as I said, it's 100% waterproof, right? And because it's inorganic, mold uh, and mildew cannot grow on it, right? Um, and the only thing that sticks to silicone is silicone. So that means no dirt is going to uh, stick to it. Now, it will lay on it, but a simple power wash will get it right back into perfect condition. Next slide. And again, you'll see silicone is good for pretty much every uh, roof substrate out there. Next slide. So what are the contractor benefits? So first, lower labor cost, right? So uh, co especially compared to single ply, uh, this is very simple. You get your buckets, you put them on a grid pattern on a roof, you get your um, your rollers and you go. It's it's not very 
you don't necessarily need extremely skilled labor to uh, get a silicone warranty um, compared to other silicones on the market. So what's nice about ours is ours was actually engineered by a roofer. So all the pains that you have as a roofer, you know, literal pains like bending over to uh, encapsulate every screw. Uh, we have accessories that actually make it so that you can just put a little dollop on the screw and it will self-level around your screw. I mean, that's saving your back and knees from tremendous pain. Uh, the fact that it's high solids means you only need to do one coat. You know, that's extremely beneficial for, for you. Another nice thing is we're the only product that's 15 minute rain safe, meaning you put it down, it takes 15 minutes for it to cure before you, um, uh, so you don't have to worry about that freak rainstorm that comes in or the job needs to get done before the end of the day uh, and you're pushing your limits. You don't need to worry about that freak rainstorm washing off what you uh, already put down. Um, next slide. Why do I push high, uh, high solids? It's like a bag of chips. You know, if you look, at, you open your bag of Lay's and you notice half the, the bag is filled with the air. You know, it kind of makes you feel like you were gypped. Well, it's the same thing with silicone. If you don't have a full container, right? A lot of it's uh, moisture or, or filler product then you're not going to get the coverage that you want. So we put high so we put high solids in ours, meaning you get what you get out of the bucket, you're actually going to get. You're going to get a lot more coverage. Next slide. And so again, the, the selling points with this seamless monolithic. So the entire roof, right, where water is sitting often, is going to be one monolithic uh, membrane. That's a huge, huge benefit to any coating, right? Um, it vapor permeable, meaning like over time, you're going to have a lot of moisture inside the building itself. And especially with hot air rising to the top, you can create a dew point between the, uh, the rooftop um, and the outside area. Uh, well, silicone breathes outward, where, so you don't have to worry about that, where a single ply doesn't always allow you to do that. Um, and it's extremely UV resistant, so it doesn't break down nearly as fast as other coatings or other single ply products. It's almost uh, one tenth of what everything else is. Next slide. And again, we're rain safe in 15 minutes, right? That's very big, and we're the only uh, coating out on the market, Henry's ProGrade 98 that has passed ASTM 7281, which makes it a true waterproofing product. Henry's the only one that passes that. Next slide. So the application, next slide. It's easy as one, two, three. One, clean your roof, okay? You're gonna power wash it, sweep the deck, make sure that you know as much debris uh, on it is off. Then you're gonna prep it. You're gonna make sure that you know all your seams are uh, taken care of. Um, we have a butter grade product and a uh, fiber product. So either one will, will help you uh, in those situations. Uh, and then after that, you're gonna coat it. And it's as simple as that, one, two, three. Next slide. We can talk about the warranty in more detail together, but we do offer a 20-year warranty. And what's nice for a contractor is um, our warranty only puts you on the hook for two years. So that means that after year two, we're, we're taking all the liability. That's very unique in the coating market. And what you'll see on this slide is if you decide to use our, our coatings, you're not the only one. As you'll see, you know, U.S. Army, Starbucks, Walt Disney, uh, we even have NASA. Uh, all these guys use our products. So you're not pioneering the product, you're just joining a list of, of uh, notable companies that are already using our products. Next slide. Um, so I'm gonna just flow through this. Uh, we, as I said, we do have acrylic and aluminum and asphalt emulsion. emulsion. Next slide. Um, so 
those have its place in the market, please reach out to me if you're interested in those. Uh, uh, I'll be glad to tell you about it, but when in doubt, silicone will work pretty much on every substrate. And to wrap it up, next slide. Um, so again, for the building owner, it's gonna cost a whole lot less than having to tear off your roof and redo, um, redo it, right? Uh, there's tax benefits, there's rebates, et cetera. Um, you know, this, this really is the way to go. Uh, and, and all while being a whole lot more environmentally friendly than ripping off the roof and redoing it. Next slide. Contractors, this is your way to differentiate. I mean, I understand that you may get more money um, from doing a rip and replace, um, but you know, if you do what's best for your customer, you know, hopefully they'll give you more business in the future. Um, and, and that's something that we should always think about, differentiate, differentiating yourself by offering what's best for the end user. Um, and it's a whole lot easier. You don't have to worry about shutting down roads to put a crane up to get your materials to the top of the roof. Uh, there's no you know, disposal fees, et cetera. It's very simple. Uh, next slide. And what you'll see throughout this presentation is one company, many products for you, many solutions. You know, we're all about building confidence. That's our motto. So no matter what the substrate is, uh, we have a product for you and we have different products depending on your condition because we know one size doesn't fit all. That's why we have all the different sizes. Next slide. And that's it. I guess we're wrapping up the questions at the end. So um, if I don't uh, get your question on the, the chat uh, conference, you know, feel free to reach out to me at any time. We have reps in every market. Uh, we're more than happy to help everyone out. And that's it. Thank you, Ryan. Great. Thanks, Connor. Uh, appreciate the presentation there. We had a couple of questions come in. So if you don't mind sticking with us here for just a second, um, I'll maybe sure. rattle a couple of these off. So. Um, as you were going along, um, I know that Elizabeth, um, she had a couple of questions, so let me uh, go ahead and kind of rattle these off to you maybe one at a time and, and take a shot or uh, we can save sure. it to the end if you need to. Um, so first off, she just had one comment that was coding is not great for application on an existing ballasted BUR. Um, that was more of a comment from her. Any response to that one? Correct. Yes, yes. So we 100% agree. Um, in that condition, we would ask you to remove all the rocks, which again is not cost effective. So we're not gonna, we're about making sure that the end user is happy, no matter what products we sell you. So in that case, it's not gonna be cost effective for you. What we can do is offer you our spray foam to go over it, but I, I do not always recommend uh, that. So um, you're absolutely correct. On a ballasted uh, built up roof that I would not use our coding products. Okay, good answer. Thanks, Connor. Um, so I think we got two more questions here. Um, second one from Elizabeth was about um, power washing an existing failing roof. Wouldn't that allow water to uh, get into you know the existing roof system and then wet the insulation? So any response to that one? Right. So that is definitely something you have to be concerned about. Now, prior to that. Um, hopefully we've done a, um, a thermal scan, which a lot of times when we do it at night, you can actually oftentimes see where some of those uh, areas are, but they're very infrequent. So we, we can't always rely on that. So what we tell people is in the areas that we know are, are, are failing, uh, if it's a section, um, Add 5% more to it, circle the area or make it a grid, cut that entire uh, area out, uh, and replace it, uh, put like products down and, uh, then go back and do it from there. Um, but you know, generally speaking, uh, it is tough to find where the leaks are and that is something that, uh, has to be considered. And that's why we want to make sure that, uh, a Henry rep is there, uh, as soon as possible. So we can help identify those areas. We have a lot of experience. A lot of our reps are actually F X roofers. Uh, who can help identify those weak areas. 
Great. Thanks, Connor. So let's do one more question, and then I know we need to move on to the other two folks here. So um, last question for you from Jesse. Uh, she said, uh, are the benefits of being vapor permeable utilized when the fluid is installed over an existing non-permeable membrane? Correct. So not all the time. Um, in the case like the last question where there are uh, areas that are uh, do have holes in it, in those small areas, yes, we will uh, help with it. But a lot of the time, um, especially with an asphalt roof, you will get moisture to the top. And that's where we help, um, uh, especially <laughs> with that asphalt, you could actually have a moisture buildup in between the layers. And that's where we help create that uh, vapor permeability. Plus, in certain areas, when you apply this, it's very humid. So you may be trapping moisture uh, between the two layers of the coating and the substrate. And that's where we will make sure that whatever humidity is trapped there has its ability to make its way out. Okay, great. Thanks, Connor. So we're going to go ahead and move on to Matt's presentation. Now we've got, uh, need to save some time for him. Uh, Connor, if you want to make yourself available in the little chat room, chat box there, uh, feel free to uh, provide more information or we'll open up the line here at the end. But um, thank you, Connor, for uh, your presentation there. I would love to join the chat box, but I can't open the website. So uh, <laughs> All right, I'll cool. stick to the end. Sounds good. We'll save it to the end. Thanks, Connor. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to our next presenter. That's going to be uh, Matt Willis, uh, also with uh, Henry. Um, Matt, looks like I'm going to go ahead and unmute you and then also give you access to control the screen. So, Matt, you should have that now, and I can hear you uh, rumbling around there. So, Matt, go ahead and take it away. Okay, yeah, we're going to switch off a little bit from the restoration side to uh, our new construction slash uh, building envelope. So, we, we have everything from the below-grade waterproofing up the walls with a uh, uh, water and vapor barriers, uh, two actual roof systems um, that can be installed with waterproofing or even underlayments for uh, metal roof systems. And uh, I'll just jump into it. Mm -hmm. Ryan, you might have taken over the slides. It's not, uh, it's not moving for me. Oh, there we go. Uh, this is my contact information. If you guys want to jot down any of this, if you uh, have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. And what I'll be going over today is uh, just basically our products. I'm not going to be going over the installation. Um, this is just a little bit about Henry Company. Basically, we um, we manage the building envelope, the flow of water, air vapor barrier. Um, basically, keep the outside out and the inside in. If that's what you intend to do, but if you, you know, want water vapors to be able to pass through the wall, um, that's a that's an option as well. Uh, this is just some examples of our manufacturing plants. Um, we have a plant. We, we're we're surrounded in uh, the whole United States and also Canada, so we uh, have materials readily available to go for your uh, project needs. Um, this is just a quick overview of the building envelope systems we have. Um, like I said, we have everything from below grade up the walls and all the way up to the roof systems. Um, and if you guys have any questions, any of this stuff as we go through, uh, feel free to let me know, but I'll go over each one of these products throughout the presentation. Uh, this is just our uh, commercial points of contact. Uh, I'm the primary point of contact in the Carolinas. We also have uh, technical services with Adrian and Heather, and then we have a product, product, uh, project management team uh, located in uh, Kimberton, Pennsylvania. This is just an example of uh, all the people that Henry works with. Uh, one one thing Henry Company um, really tries to differentiate themselves with is uh, our rigorous testing, um, especially with our air barriers. We have over uh, 30,000 uh, different air barrier assemblies that uh, comply with NFPA 285, 
and um, we have uh, roof slash waterproofing warranties that can be as much as 30 years. And this is just an overview of all our air barrier systems. Um, we have several impermeable options as well as permeable options uh, and also UV stable options. Uh, I'm gonna jump into each one of these. This is just some uh, pictures and examples of the different uh, fully adhered air barriers. So the first uh, product we're gonna go over is a sheet applied air barrier. Um, this is a permeable system. We have uh, the VP uh, 100 for the residential slash light commercial side um, for use for buildings up to uh, three stories. And then when you get into the commercial side of things, we have the VP 160 um, to comply with NFPA 285. Um, this material can go on some, uh, some substrates primerless where other ones uh, will need primer um, and uh, this is a, a self-gasketing material. Next, we have our non-permeable option. Um, this, uh, this is another fully adhered option. This will not let uh, vapor, uh, water vapors pass. Um, a great secondary rain barrier, and uh, it's more of our uh, fully adhered protection. And if you're looking for something else that's uh, non-permeable, but you need a UV stability, then you would want to use our metal clad system. 100% um, UV resistant, non-permeable. Great option behind uh, rain screens and open cladding systems if you're gonna try to stay with a peel and stick instead of the fluidipod. This is uh, just some of the advantages of the um, sheet applied air barriers. One of the main advantages is uh, manufacturer controlled thicknesses. Um, they don't have to worry about oversprays. There's no mixing. You don't need any special equipment. You don't need any pumps or spray rigs or anything like that. Um, but just some of the considerations is uh, flashings can be very difficult and you're always gonna wanna roll, it, roll stuff in to make sure that you're getting the bond desired. Now we're gonna go into our fluid applied air barriers. The first one is our impermeable air block 16. Um, this product is uh, unique as it can be installed uh, down to 20 degrees. Um, you can install the full um, high build thickness of uh, 60 mils in one pass without, without sagging. And it's also a uh, cold weather uh, free stall uh, stable. So, you know, you have a job site, it gets cold, then you, your guys actually accidentally leave some buckets on the site. It can thaw back out and the material is perfectly fine. Then I have Airblock 17, which I like to think is the sister product to um, Airblock 16. This is the this is this product is permeable, um, has all the same technologies, um, free stall, stable, stable um, can be left on site. And this one you would actually spray at uh, 70 wet mills, and that can be sprayed in one pass without sagging um, to get the job done easier. And uh, you know, this one has this is a uh, 14 perms at our high build but it also, we also have a medium build option with this as well. This is our all new air, uh, air barrier that just came out this year. It's a uh, still terminated polyether um, chemistry. It, it's a uh, green safe almost, almost instantly. Um, it can be applied over wet, wet surfaces. Um, it can be exposed to UV exposure. Uh, by itself for up to 12 months, but it can be permanently exposed to UV exposure, uh, like open clad systems and rain screens um, for the for, for the duration of the building. And now this is one of our older technologies. This is, uh, I would like to say, like the big brother to the AirBlock 17. Um, this was a, one of our first uh, fluid applies that was out, uh, has all the same features of the air block 17, but it cannot be installed in the cold weather. Uh, after about 40 degrees, you wanna stop installing this because you don't want this to freeze. And this also needs to be installed in multiple passes, uh, as much as two or three passes when installing, instead of just doing one spray across.
And then you have Airblock 32, which is like the big brother to Airblock 16, um, non-permeable. And this also has to be sprayed in multiple passes. Um, one thing to think about with our air barriers, if it's an odd number, it's uh, permeable. If it's an even number, it's impermeable. Then you have uh, Air Block 33. This is one of our most versatile products. It can be a thick build system. It's uh, permanently UV stable and great for high temperature applications. Uh, as you can see from the picture, uh, copper um, is very hot um, and it, it performs well behind copper. Um, this is also permeable and um, great secondary rain barrier. Air block 21, this, uh, this doubles as both installation adhesive and uh, air barrier membrane. This is the only one that is different uh, when we say uh, the odds are permeable, evens are non-permeable. This is a non-permeable just because it is uh, directly stuck to the insulation. <clears throat> And we just got some of the advantages of the fluid applied air barriers. Um, one thing is seamless, they're seamless and monolithic. Um, they, uh, they can be fast application, um, quick coverages, uh, great over uh, rough or irregular surfaces, um, but just some of the uh, considerations. Uh, one of the main ones is overspray and monitoring thickness. Uh, you wanna make sure the crews have a mill gauge and are applying the uh, product properly. This is just an example of some of our accessories. Uh, we have multiple options for window, door, other rough opening flashings. We have a uh, fluid applied options, as well as peel and stick options. And we also have uh, through wall flashing options as well. Um, and then we have primers that go with, uh, are compatible with all of our air barriers. Um, they help uh, with some, dirt, some dirty surfaces and uh, other surfaces where you not, can't necessarily get the exact pressure you need when, um, when applying the product. Uh, rolling wise. And this just goes over the uh, mill chart. Do you see how many square feet you get per gallon when they're asking about how many, when we're talking about how many mills you need, as well as something that Connor, uh, Connor described earlier when it goes into the solids. If you have 50% solids and you have 10 mils, you're really only going to have uh, five mils dry, dry uh, film thickness when you're, when it's all said and done. Uh, most of our air barriers are a high or medium build uh, air barrier just because, uh, you know, when you get to some of these thin builds, mainly on anything under 20 mils, you do uh, have the um, problem sometimes with cracking, micro cracks, and can um, cause problems in the long run. Uh, now we're going to get into our waterproofing systems. We have uh, both fluid applied and sheet, sheet applied, uh, both cold and hot applied when it comes to the fluid applied as well. And we'll, uh, we'll jump into that. These are just some examples of uh, sheet applied on the bottom and fluid applied on the top. So 7911 is a, uh, one of our uh, longest, uh, I guess, longest around waterproofing product we have. Um, it's uh, basically hot rubberized asphalt. Um, you do need some special equipment for this. Uh, you do have to have a melter, um, but you, when it's all done, you have about a 215 uh, mil thickness of hot applied rubberized asphalt as well as protection course. And uh, this can also, I'll, I'll jump in this a little bit um, in a little bit, but you can have pavers, uh, vegetative roofing, um, all different kinds of uh, overburden on top. And our 7911 EV is uh, very close to our 7911. This just has 25% uh, post-consumer recycled content if you need uh, lead credits. Uh, 
Uh, CM100 is a cold fluid applied uh, product. It's um, a great alternative to hot rubberized, especially if you have a, a smaller area where you wouldn't even have room to get a, a kettle or a melter up there. Um, you can also get 20 year warranties and this can also uh, have VRA and overburden over top of it as well. And another cold fluid applied option we have is our seven, I mean, um, our Aquablock SB. Um, it's another alternative to hot rubberized, but it can also be used to repair hot rubberized products. Uh, sometimes you'll have uh, jobs that are going long term and you'll have some damages to some hot rubber and Aquablock SB is a great, uh, great uh, way to repair that. Now we're going to our, our peel and stick or self-adhered uh, waterproofing. This can be installed on both, both the vertical and horizontal. This is our WP200. Um, very low odor, no VOCs, it can be installed in cold weather, um, and it can withstand hydrostatic pressure. And another option we have is our Puma, which is a poly polyurethane modified MMA. Um, cures in about an hour. It can also be used with our 79011 system for flashings and where it can be used as a system itself. Um, great, great product for balconies, um, walkable decks that you that um, you need to have construction over top and you can't wait for the time for hot rubberized to be set in there and overburden and put on top where this can be UV stable and you can drive a car over in as fast as an hour. And I was talking about this a little bit earlier, vegetative roofing assemblies. This works with both our 79B11 hot and our CM100. And if you wanted to, you could also do it over top of our Puma. And this is just what it looks like a full system. And now if you're looking for something uh, below grade or on a wall that um, does not uh, withstand hydrostatic pressure, but can slow the passes of water. Uh, we have a damp proofing option, and I'll just go over these options really quick. Um, so we have uh, fibered options and non-fibered options. This is the 785. This is a trial grade um, corrosion resistant for wall cavities. Um, it's a good product, but once again, if you need to resist against hydrostatic pressure, this is not the product you're going to use. You're going to want to go to waterproofing instead of damp proofing. Uh, this is pretty much the same thing as the 785, but it's just a, a sprayable version. A um, little more beefed up than our normal damp proofing products. Um, and it's a hot solid formulation. Uh, 788 and the next product I'm going to show you after this, 789 are our most uh, specified damp proofing when damp proofing is needed. Um, this is our, our non-fibered option and 789 is our fibered option. And as far as the commercial roof underlayment uh, for uh, high temp to go underneath copper metal panels or other metal panels, we have our uh, PE200HT, which is uh, just our high temp. And that's what it looks like. Uh, basically, can handle up to about 260 degrees. And like I said, it's ideal for underneath metal panels that uh, conduct a lot of heat. And that's everything. If anybody has any questions. All right. And thanks, Matt. Appreciate the presentation. Um, just checking out the uh, comments here. And we can maybe do uh, two questions and we'll turn it over to Josh. You know, he's got quite a bit of information as well. Um, had one question from uh, Jesse. How long can the air block membranes be exposed to UV? Uh, is there a short answer for that one, Matt? Yeah, each of them are different, 31 and 32 or three months, 16 and 17 uh, are six months, air block 29 and 33 are permanently UV stable. And as, when it comes to the peel and sticks, uh, you just want to stick around the six month time frame. Okay, 
Good answer there. Uh, and then one more question. This is from Elizabeth. Uh, does Aqua Block Puma have reinforcing? Yes, Aqua Block is actually Aqua Block Puma is actually a full system. Um, so that you have a, you can have a non reinforced system, um, but the, still the flashings and everything will need to be reinforced, or you can have a full reinforced system where you can have fabric throughout the whole system. Okay, great. All right. Well, thank you, Matt. We'll save some additional questions maybe towards the end if they if folks have them. So go ahead and put those in the chat box, and we will circle back. So. Um, at this time, we're going to kick it over to Josh Bailey. He is going to wrap it up for us today with residential light commercial building envelope systems. And Hello. Yep, go ahead, Josh. I think I cut myself off there, but you are good to go. Yeah, kind of scared me there. Okay. Hey, uh, so let, let me go ahead and go forward here. Okay, so just a little brief introduction about me. My name is Joshua Bailey. I am out of the Raleigh, North Carolina market. I have a direct counterpart in uh, Charlotte market named Ashley Rothwell. So either of us, if you're located in the uh, Carolinas, Virginia, or East Tennessee market, feel free to you know contact one of us. Uh, all of our information, as well as my um, other peers and other segments, is available at henry.com, www.henry.com. You can look us up and you can find your sales rep. Um, we also, uh, you know, I don't know if Matt or uh, Connor mentioned this, we don't also act or only act as sales reps, we act as technical reps and technical advisors too. So we are out on the job sites doing mock wall trainings and doing, uh, doing the technical assistance that's needed to, uh, to help with the, both the residential and the commercial training of our products and making sure that they, uh, they are put on right or, or, or assembled right. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and go, go forward. Um, Matt actually covered a few of the products. We have some overlap on some of the products in the residential and in the uh, the uh, commercial products, but uh, I'll touch briefly on those and I'll move through uh, most everything pretty quick. But uh, as you guys are seeing on this, uh, this first slide, I just want to kind of hammer home the uh, term system. I uh, want to make sure that everybody realizes that these are all system um, and, and Henry's very systematic system approach on all their products. And you can look in the residential market, we have everything from roofs below grade uh, to, uh, to the, uh, the vertical wall assemblies. I'm gonna go ahead and forward here, whoops. So this is just a little, again, a little, little short thing with uh, with the Henry residential light commercial side of the business, which is my segment. Um, we focus on our system as a one, two, three component. It's kind of a uh, kind of a a la carte uh, uh, product system for uh, for for you to pick from. So we'll go through uh, each of the products, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, stop me along the way. But uh, we'll go ahead and go on here. I'm having a little bit of lag time here, Ryan, on my selection. Okay, so the first product here is a uh, non-woven, uh, it's our Weather Smart product, and this is a mechanically fastened product. Um, this is this is a true residential uh, non-woven product that's gonna compete against like your Typars and Tyvex that are out there. Uh, some of the uh, key characteristics of the product is that we have 180 days uh, stability. This product is surfactant resistance. Um, I invite you guys to uh, click on the YouTube link below. You can see some of the uh, cool things that our products do uh, with surfactants. And uh, one of the questions I get uh, with with uh, in my AIA and architect presentations, I get how, get a question as how do uh, some of these building papers or building uh, building products know the interior side of the wall from the exterior side of the wall? Well, this product actually can tell the directional flow of moisture. Um, there's a little cool YouTube video um, that you can go to again and click on that and take a look at it. But uh, that's that's going to be our uh, our non-woven residential product. And then next slide here is just some pictures. Uh, we do we do uh, do logo co-logo or co-label products for uh, customers if they choose to do that. But you can see that that product's up in the cape. It looks like okay. Moving on here. Okay, weather smart drainable. We're starting to see this uh, this uh, specified a lot more out in the markets. People are wanting that product that drains the water off the wall um, at a higher efficiency, and that's what this product's going to do. It's a dimpled product, uh, 15 perm. You can see again, it's 180 days UV stable, 
and uh, it's going to drain an efficiency of about 95%. So this basically gets the water off the wall uh, a lot faster than a conventional type of wrap. Um, and as you can see down there, it exceeds even the Oregon's codes. Okay. Moving on here. Uh, we do offer a commercial grade product. Uh, this is a mechanically fastened product again on the uh, residential light commercial side. Uh, this does have the NSP, NSP 285 fire rating behind it. Uh, 12 months UV. If you look at some of these characteristics, it, uh, it actually, uh, from a cost standpoint, this is a value engineer over a lot of the products that are out there. And it has uh, industry leading warranty uh, and industry leading uh, uh, other composites like uh, 12 months UV, uh, the tear strength, and then the water hold out uh, at, a, at a very competitive price here. Moving on here. Okay. Henry VP100, uh, this, this is not a new product, but it is in the Carolinas. Uh, this product was actually invented by a company um, out of Canada who Henry uh, purchased back in 1996. Uh, Matt had mentioned that the VP family, uh, they had cut their teeth in the commercial industry in about starting in about 97, 98. And we released this product, I believe in 2014 um, as a residential grade product. So this, again, going back to what Connor said, don't feel like you're going to be cutting your teeth and one of the pioneers of this product if you try it this product's been out in the market we know how it performs and know what it does uh, this is a true air barrier uh, it is self-sealing matt had mentioned that as well that it uh, will gasket around a uh, a nail or a, uh, or a cladding penetration uh, so if you drive a uh, fastener through this it will self-seal that um, the other the other caveats to this is that it does create energy efficiency Connor had mentioned the HVA system kicking on and off. This lowers the air exchanges. We find that uh, in many of our case studies, which you can you can go to our website and look at, or you can have me email you a, a case study or two. Um, we find that our air, our blower door test, the ACHs, are sub uh, sub two um, compared to more of the conventional wraps that are, you're going to find without sealing the wall systems and do anything special uh, internal sealing of the wall systems. Uh, are going to be more around the five to five to seven range. Okay, moving on here. There's a there's a money shot of a, uh, a project up in uh, the New England states. I can just kind of show you. It has has a good it's a good picture of our uh, VP100 and our uh, it looks like our high temp on top that Matt had talked about, which is another crossover product. Now in this application, you can see uh, one of the uh, cool things about VP100 is it can be hung vertical and horizontal. Which is another thing that when we're out in the field, we uh, we take a look at the uh, look at the project and see what uh, kind of diagnose what's the best way to hang the product, and it makes it more efficient for the install. Jumbo Tech. So you see right there at the top, it says classic. This product was invented by our former CEO's uh, grandfather back in the 50s. This was the uh, this was this came after felt, but before any of the uh, polymetric type products. Uh, this paper this product's been around for a long time, JumboTex, um, and uh, one of the products that we have pioneered. And then its big brother would be the next one, which would be Super JumboTex. So we find this product as a uh, secondary layer or sacrificial layer, and we also find it as a uh, an entire uh, building wrap in in, in uh, several markets in in the Outer Banks and in the uh, Charleston Kiowa Island area. People are using this as an entire weather resistant barrier. But uh, this is a good uh, this is a good base layer between a uh, a stucco or stone veneer type uh, cladding application. Moving on here, Hydrotex. So this gives you, uh, this marries two products together. This marries our dimpled drainable wrap and our super jumbo tex uh, line of, of WRBs together. So instead of having to wrap the house twice, use twice the amount of fasteners, this comes in one rolled. It's hold to get held together with friction and it's applied onto the house. I believe the rolls are, well, it has the roll length right there, 40 inches. So these aren't nine foot rolls that are gigantic, that are hard to handle. But uh, this gives you some more information on that. System, uh, system number two, or the second part of our system is the flashings. So we have a pretty broad perspective of uh, peel and sticks. We have everything from asphalt-based flashings 
to butyl to block copolymer up to liquid applied flashings. And I like to I like to say I like to talk about flashings in the aspect of uh, of gasoline. You go and you pull up to the, the uh, you pull up to the gas station. You have your 87, your 89, your 92 octane. Well, the asphalt based flashings are going to kind of fall into the 87. They they get the job done, but they're not they're the commodity based. They're the they uh, they're the, what the, most of the builders are actually using because of a price from a price standpoint. Um, they have they have limitations as far as compatibility with some sealants and some uh, PVC based products. So some of the manufacturers out there, the window manufacturers, are actually moving away from asphalt based um, flashing, and we're actually going more into uh, the next slide, which would be our butyl based flashings. So butyl would be 89 octane at the gas station. It uh, has less limitations. There's really no known compatibility issues with any type of materials out there. Um, it can be in, installed at lower temperatures than asphalt. You don't have the compatibility issues, like I said, and it adheres about five to seven times greater than the, uh, than the asphalt-based flashings. And then our top performer, our Cadillac would be, our version would be the uh, FortiFlash 365. This is a block copolymer technology, kind of in the same family as acrylic-based technology. But this product uh, is very good on commercial products, uh, multifamily jobs that are going to be open for 12 months or or right around 12 months. This gives you a full 12 month uh, UV protection. This is a very thin millage product. Uh, it's very aggressive because the block copolymers and the acrylics don't need as much of the uh, buildup to uh, have the same performance or a way better performance than the asphalts and the butyl. So you'll find this this product is a as a thinner millage. Okay. And then uh, flexible butyl. I'm sure most of you guys have seen this out there, but this is the this is what I call the uh, and many people call the lazy man's flashing. It's a uh, seamless flash for the seal pan or any uh, weird penetrations, round or oval shaped penetrations. But it uh, it's seamless. It's one one piece versus going in there and cutting out uh, the straight flashing and doing the bow ties. Okay, uh, moving on. Our system number three, the third part to get our warranty in our system is going to be our uh, sealant. So this is the moist stop sealant. This is a uh, STP technology. Uh, th this is uh, it comes in uh, 20 ounce sausages and 10 ounce uh, and 10 ounce tubes. It's also a uh, fluid applied uh, flashing, so you can actually create a monolithic around the window too with this product if you wanted to. And then the other product I failed to mention was the AirBlock LF, which is, an, is the fourth uh, newest technology for us. And it's going to be the uh, fluid applied for the window seal, too. So we, we have everything from asphalt, butyl, block copolymer up to the uh, fluid applied technology. Okay. Uh, Henry Crystal Clear Sealant. This is a proprietary uh, sealant that we make. Uh, this can this is the only sealant that we really want to be used with the uh, with the Blue Skin VP 100 line of family. Um, I can talk to you guys more about that offline uh, if you have questions about that. But I just wanted to show you that we do have a sealant that's proprietary for the uh, Blue Skin family. Okay. And of course, sheeting tape, you can't forget the sheeting tape. We make a uh, residential size, which is an inch and seven eighths. And then we make a commercial size, which is gonna be a hundred, or, uh, three inch. Uh, this is an acrylic based uh, tape, sticks to about everything. If you ever need to move, uh, you ever need tape for your moving boxes, feel free to pick up a free, few rolls. It'll stick, stick like a son of a gun to those too, okay? Moist stop corner shields, we make a flexible shield. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen these out in the markets or has uh, specified or used these or purchased these, but uh, we make a flexible one. Uh, you know, if you have a, if you actually have a true corner, you could use the the bottom one that is a uh, rigid one. Okay, but those are available, and you can see right there they were developed in conjunction with TS TLS Labs. Uh, you can read a little bit about them there. Skip this slide here. Okay, roofing underlayments. Um, we, we have line of uh, we have the line of the p 200 ht the high temp that Matt had talked about uh, we also have products called we have a product called rf 200 that comes in a low temperature product a mid-range and then a, uh, a a tile and metal product as well so we have those out there as well okay and then we also make a granular product which is a commodity based product called eve guard that goes under asphalt asphalt shingles 
below grade waterproofing. Matt touched base on this. I just want you guys to know that it's available out there. Um, this is a sheet applied product WP 200. Um, and then we have the uh, drainage board composites to go with it. So we can uh, waterproof the entire foundation or below uh, basement level of a, uh, of a residential or even a multifamily building. And then uh, some ancillary products, Forta board. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with RAM board. This is our version of it. There's some cool little YouTube videos. If you get bored in the day, you wanna take a look at those, but uh, take a look at those and you can see how this thing, how these perform against our competitors out there. Okay. So system, system warranty, I'd mentioned about, everything's a system with the system one, two, three warranty. You, you need the WRB, you need the flashing, and then you need the sealant to get our warranty. Uh, this is a pretty busy slide here, but if you look over to the top left, it talks about how we're best in class in all of our in all of these categories. And there's a little denotation down there that says basically that uh, you know we're not saying that all of our competitors don't have any of these, but none of them have all four of these. So we have a 15-year coverage uh, covers material, labor, and repairs. Uh, it is not prorated and it is transferable. We do not require any original receipts. We actually have the date stamped on the product. So you can, we can actually, if there is a claim, we can actually take a look and see when the product was manufactured and kind of go off that. We don't require the uh, builder or the homeowner to actually go back to the, to the lumber yard or the architect or the builder to uh, ask them who, you know, when, when this product was purchased in for a receipt, okay? So those are those are all industry leading right there, and then it just this is just a snapshot again of the uh, the warranties. So I basically what I wanted to take away from the presentation here is is that we are system based and we are a one stop shop for you guys. Uh, we have everything you guys need from a residential, um, multifamily, even into commercial um, projects. Up to uh, up to the uh, roofing and decking systems. Um, one last thing, uh, talk talk about the True Blue warranty. This is a working progress for us, but uh, we have people in several markets that are uh, part of this program. We do offer a lifetime warranty to uh, people that become certified uh, installers of our of our product. Uh, there's a little bit of process to that, but uh, pretty pretty painless but it gives the homeowner uh, peace of mind with lifetime warranty and it is one time transferable uh, uh, pending an application. So that's all I got, Ryan. Uh, it looked like we had a question come through. I, I didn't release the controls back over to you there. Sure, it sounds good. Thank you, Josh, very much. Uh, let's go ahead and check the chat box and I'll um, go ahead and get this question over to you. So looks like we had at least one from Jeremy. Um, his question is, if you drive a self-drilling fastener through the Blue Skin VP100, will it still seal around the fastener? A self-drilling, so he's being like a screw that's actually like you can set. The answer to that would be, the short answer would be yes. Connor, do you wanna weigh in on that at all? Uh, yeah, so, it, so it, it will seal around. Now you keep in mind, you you, a drill's job is to pull stuff out so it's tricky um i'm not going to say 100 percent of the time it will when it comes to a screw uh but we're comfortable enough to put a warranty around it knowing that uh a vast majority of the time it will uh, seal around uh vp100 yes and we pull in uh, other people to help us with stuff. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, if I, I, I can help with that a little bit as well. Um, as long as it's uh, driven flush and, and straight, it'll it'll self gasket around the fastener. So this is building science after all. So I'm glad that we have three building scientists on the uh, webinar today, and building scientists also asking questions always makes it fun for us. So um, I know that we're a little over time here, so I'm going to do a little bit of a wrap up. But if folks do have questions, please continue to put those in the chat box, and then we'll open up the line here at the end as well. So we're not going to go away um, just quite yet, but please do ask your questions, and we'll get to those in just a second. So um, as a bit of a wrap up, um, just wanted to reiterate the uh, information about NCBPA, of course. Uh, the reason that we're able to offer these things like webinars for free and other educational events is that we have great member companies like Henry 
uh, working with us um, to fund our work and then we in turn help to make our industry better. So um, please do consider becoming a member if you're not already and you can find information on our website and you should have our contact information as well. As a brief but large announcement, we will be sending out a save the date here in just a couple of weeks about our Southeast Conference that will be held August 24th through 26th uh, of next year. That will be at the Raleigh Convention Center. We are anticipating up to 1,400 industry professionals um, working with the uh, HVAC and Plumbing Association of North Carolina, that's PHCC, and an awful lot of national partners. So if you wanna see folks like Henry uh, in person and wanna wait 11 months, um, we'll have an event for you. If you wanna see him sooner, get in touch, become a member, and we've got other events as well. So here's the contact information for Connor, Matt, and Josh. I wanna say thank you to each of them for offering their time today. And to folks listening in later on through the video, uh, have any questions, feel free to contact these gentlemen and they will do their best, I'm sure, to reach out as quickly as possible. Uh, here's the contact information for myself and NCBPA. If you all have any questions, feel free to let us know and we will do our best to answer as soon as possible and do appreciate everybody for being on today's webinar. So um, I think that Connor, Matt, and Josh and I will stay on for just a couple of minutes to check to see if there's any other questions. And if you'd like to, we can also open up the phone line. You can raise your hand by uh, putting in a message on the chat box or uh, take yourself off mute if you'd like to. So um, otherwise, thanks everybody very much for participating today. We'll stay on a little bit. And then again, Connor, Matt, and Josh, thanks all for sharing your information with us today. And if you guys have anything else to add, uh, feel free to unmute yourselves and we can have a little bit of discussion here as well. All right, so just waiting to see if there's any questions. Uh, Connor, Matt, or Josh, if you guys have any additional comments or anything, feel free to provide them here, or uh, obviously we can get those out to folks in uh, email afterward. Yep. Yeah, this is Matt. I, I know that there was a question about uh, self-sealing on our on the air barriers. Um, yeah, all, all of our air barriers on the commercial side, fluid applied and um, Peel and stick are all self gasketing so if the fastener is driven in straight and properly, it will seal around them. Okay, thanks for that, Matt. All right, looks like we don't have any other questions, so I think that we'll consider this one a wrap for today. So uh, again, Matt, Connor, Josh, thank you all for participating. Thanks to Henry Company for doing this, and then thanks to everybody that participated live and is listening in later on. If there's any questions, you've got our contact information we'll be happy to help out. So thanks everybody. Have a good rest of the day and contact us if you need anything else. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Ryan. Thank, Thank you, you, Ryan.